Hey guys, I wanted to do this video tonight uh, in response to a video that I seen earlier today and I want I want to share that it is a deception and I want people to be aware of it and to to not be fooled <laughs> by these demonic spirits. Um, I noticed that there's a lot of people today that are against deliverance ministries. They say, well, you know, they, they believe in generational curses and it's not biblical. Jesus died on a cross, so therefore uh, he became a curse for us. Uh, so, I, so I also, I, I, I assume that they probably also believe that since Jesus died on a cross and, you know, for our sins and for us to be forgiven, that that means we automatically go to heaven and, and you know, uh, there's no no need to believe or, or to do anything um, to achieve this, you know, to be saved. So, same thing with curses, you know, if we are obedient to God, you know, or if we don't, if we have faith in Jesus, you know, then we'll be blessed, you know, but as far as a person that comes for deliverance that's not even saved yet, that's seeking the Lord, seeking, seeking help, okay, we minister to the person, and we talk to them, and we try to lead them to repentance, and, and to, uh, we renounce things with them in prayer, and we cast the demons out, you know, um, there's nothing unbiblical about that. But anyway, so don't throw out the, the baby with the bathwater is what I'm really trying to say. Um, a lot of people, you know, they don't see something right in deliverance, so therefore they think, oh, well, see, deliverance isn't, isn't biblical anyway. Well, see, I agree that there are some deliverance ministries that don't do things the right way, the, the way that it is according to Scripture. Well, they're in error. You know, it's just like a lot of false ministries. You know, there's also a lot of Christians ministries that claim to be Christian that are false and teach wrong things too, you know? So anyway, so what I'm trying to get at is since I'm sharing this information and showing the deception that, that is within this ministry that I'm going to name, um, doesn't mean that deliverance in itself is not biblical because it is. Um, this ministry in particular is the one that is, it's Bob Larson. I know a lot of people respect him, and I, I know a lot of really good ministries that actually, you know, talk highly about him. But he has really gone off south. <laughs> um, he is not... I already did not like a lot of the things he does. I've never been a follower of Bob Larson. Uh, my discernment gauge has always told me something was not right about this guy and the way he does things. You know, the way he pounds people on the back or the chest with the Bible and says he's dividing the soul and the spirit, you know, by using, you know, ritualistic type of, of uh, hand gestures and, and like I said, beating them on, on the back with the Bible and stuff is not the way God meant for his word to be dividing the soul from the spirit. <laughs> um, it's when we read the word and we are taking in from the word the, and, and the Holy Spirit is uh, teaching us things and, you know, our mind is being renewed and we are separating ourselves from from ungodly people and we're, do, you know, changing our lives and stuff that's when our our soul and our spirit are becoming cut in two, you know, to being divided. So anyway, um, there's a lot of things he does that's not biblical. So anyway, what he has done now, which is way off the top, is now he is committing necromancy. He is literally casting out, uh, and when I say casting out, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't mean just cast it out as like it's a demon, but he sits there and talks to this what he claims to be the disassociated. Uh, let's see, what's he call it? Hold on, I'm sorry. He calls it uh, disassociated soul transference. It's DST, and of course he admits 
that this is a phrase or name that he himself coined. Well, of course he did, because it's not in the Bible. Um, anyway, so what he is doing is I'm going to show you a video clip of what I saw. I seen it. It was actually in another, in a group's, um, in, a, in a different group. And in this group, the person, I guess, that shared it was actually defending Bob Larson. And he actually had said, um, let's see, let me see. He said, disassociation is a condition that is highly complex and the scientific and clinical understandings of it are still changing. We regard Lar Larson as being very sound and reliable. What I have studied on this subject and what Larson gives us leads me to give him the benefit of the doubt on this. Okay, now whatever they studied on this subject wasn't the Bible. <laughs> and whatever Larson tells them, who cares if it's not biblical? Um, so then I other people were, you know, saying, well, you know, uh, this other person says, so speak into a soul fragment using the deceased ancestor's name and the person speaking as if he or she is the dead relative is not communicating with the dead relative. And then the person said, although their style is different than my own, I have read and studied almost all of Larson's books. I have not seen anything contained in them that would be construed as communicating with the dead. Ancestral curses are taught as a soul fragment from trauma or other events, but nothing that is against the Word of God. Well, I don't see it being according to the Word of God. Um, so if it's not in the Bible, it would be against the Word of God. Uh, you know, a lot of people take take verses and what they do is they'll take them out of context like they'll say well the the body see what is it there's one verse that says something about the broken hearted the broken spirit and stuff like that so they assume that means that the person's mind just goes off and then creates these alter personalities okay well <clears throat> a personality excuse me a personality is not the person. <clears throat> the personality is the characteristics of a person. It is a combination of characteristics or qualities that form an individual's distinct behavior, their character. Another person's personality cannot transfer to another person. We are born with our own personality traits. As we grow and mature, our personality continues to form. Things that contribute to this formation is experiences we've had, whether good or bad, trauma or learned ability and inability to trust or others. It is formed by our own experiences and by how others have influenced us. If we suddenly have a completely different personality take over us, it is not our own. It is another being. And when I say being, I do not mean a human being. I mean it's a demonic being. <laughs> um, now, on this, on this video, what I'm going to show is... I'm going to put the link below, okay, of the video. That way y'all could see it and watch the whole thing if you want to and see what you get from it. Tell me what your discernment tells you. Um, but anyway, it says, Bob has the boy renounce the sins of his grandfather, that his grandfather did, and says that now, in Jesus' name, God forgives him, since he renounced it to Bob. Now, this man's been dead. We're talking about a person that's already dead. And then he says, and that now he can go and be at peace with Jesus. He doesn't need forgiveness for what his father did because he's not held accountable for what his father did according to scripture. You know, um, if this is not a true form of necromancy, then 
you know, this message just totally just sends confusion, okay? Um, other people that's in the deliverance ministry will watch videos of Bob's, and they'll try to, you know, learn from it or, you know, see what they can find out about it. And for him to be sharing this kind of stuff, I mean, it. a lot of people watches his videos, and I'm telling you, it's sending confusion. And, I mean, we have enough nonsense in a lot of the deliverance ministries. We don't need this, too. And it's really weird because watching him do this in this video was a lot like how when I was a paranormal investigator, we used to sit around and when we would talk to these spirits, we would literally feel like we were leading them to the light. We would, you know, talk to them and, you know, uh, tell them they can go on now. And, you know, like Jesus couldn't never get them there. We had to do it, you know. This is the same thing with this this deliverance minister. He feels like he can send them to the light, you know, because they have now renounced their sins through their generational line, through a person, you know, a descendant of this other person. You know, it's nonsense. It really is. We don't see nowhere in Scripture Jesus or the disciples casting out altars. Or trying to counsel them. We don't see anywhere in scripture. People. Um, renouncing sins. Of their father or their mothers. You don't see it. One time I seen where the disciples asked Jesus. Why was this boy possessed or a man. I can't remember who it was. But he was possessed. And Jesus. Had, he had asked Jesus. He said was it the sins of him or his father. And Jesus said that it was to bring glory to to God or something. I'm I'm totally paraphrasing that. Sorry, I don't have it in front of me. But he did not say that it was because of the sins of his father. Okay? Um I do know the sins of the father do bring down generational curses uh to their children and their and the other descendants, but they're not held liable and they're not guilty of their ancestors' sins. They're not. The Bible tells us that clearly. Um, okay, and also, in this video, at the 5 minute, around the 5 minute and 40 second mark, um, it explains on the screen, it says, that the entity is not a demon or altar, but a fragment of a personality that lived in 1929. He's talking about a part of a human spirit that's living in this person. Who lived in 1929? <laughs> Does our real spirit actually divide off in parts living in other humans? These parts or fragments have a personality and emotions of their own? Absolutely not. Anytime we see a spirit speaking through someone besides the Holy Spirit when a person talks in tongues, it was it's a demon. Uh, sometimes called a devil, evil spirit, unclean spirit, spirit of divination, spirit of infirmity, etc. But it's not an altar or a, uh, like the phrase that uh, Bob Larson coined, a disassociated soul transference. <laughs> he even wrote a big article on it. You can even look it up. Um, he wrote a big article about it. He says, in his article, he says, for many years, while ministering deliverance, I have encountered an unusual circumstance which I have come to call disassociated soul transference. DSTs are similar to the phenomena that we have coined ancestral generational disassociation. Okay, in ancestral generational disassociation, the identity we interact with is the soul fragment of a deceased person embedded in the mind of a living person. This broken soul fragment has been disassociated by trauma at some time in the past and passed on genetically to a descendant. They are soul fragments from a living person transmitted by a deeply affectionate no, I'm sorry, disaffectionate 
sexual, spiritual, or emotional relationship. A fragment of one person's identity is conveyed to another through this bonding. DSTs may also be transferred by so-called astral projection, whereby a partial human soul identity is deliberately sent to another individual with whom there has been some occult contact, such as through witchcraft or cult religions. He's going on experience is what he's doing. He's not going by what the Bible says. He's not standing on the Word of God. Okay, he's not doing it. He's he's going by experience. He's going by what these demons are telling him. Um, if you see in the video at that one point where he says um, he was talking about something. I forgot how it went, but he was talking about something. And the demon said, oh, you mean what I did in 1929? And then he says, oh, what did you do in 1929? And then he goes on this complete rabbit trail. <laughs> That could be, that's why the demon did it. That's why the demon brought it up. Because he's trying to get throw him, you know, bait to get him off track of just casting him out. Um, but they do that. They want to get they want to deter you from what you're doing, you know. Um But anyway, I'm gonna show you the video and you just see what you think about it. I'm gonna let it play for a good couple minutes because I want you to see a good portion of what what I'm talking about, so you'll know um, that I'm not just making this up. <laughs> so anyway, I'll be right back. I break that curse. I break that curse. I go back to the root of this curse. I go back to the root of this curse. And I renounce that curse. I renounce that curse. Nineteen twenty-nine. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever happened. Whatever happened. In nineteen twenty-nine. Nineteen twenty-nine. I renounce it. And I command. And I command. This evil spirit. This evil spirit. Reveal what happened. Reveal what happened. In nineteen twenty-nine. In nineteen twenty-nine. Something was done to your grandfather or your grandmother. Yeah. He was a priest. Yes. Tom. Well, he must have done something pretty bad. Well, if you're not going to tell us, we'll talk to Thomas. Thomas, you did something awful in 1929. We need to know what you did. Because your descendants are tormented because of it. We are not here to judge you, we're here to help you. What did you do in 1929? Burnt down the church. You what? Burn down the church? Why? It's an accident. An accident? You didn't tell anybody? I couldn't. What? It was the bloody priest. Ireland? County Cork. You, you sure it was an accident? Absolutely. Drink a lot. Well, maybe the bishop wouldn't forgive you. But Jesus would. He hasn't of yet. He can now, by the oil of the Spirit and the holy water of the cleansing of God. I pronounce you forgiven through Christ. Amen. Jesus. For what was never your fault, receive it, Thomas, and go to be at peace with Christ. He stretches out His hands to you now. He calls you to His presence. Amen. Go to be with Him. Marcus? <laughs> wow. wow. I know why. <laughs> you people wow. don't have any idea what you've seen here. I tapped into the memory bank, something we call ancestral generational dissociation, a dissociated fragment of his ancestor living in his mind, still carrying a torment of the former identity. Not the person, but the fragment of the mind in him keeping the curse alive because he could not forgive himself. Say, I, Marcus. Okay, but you see what I, I was talking about? 
and I like the way he, see, he knows that people's going to say something about him talking to the dead. Because if you notice, he said, well, it's not the actual person. But then he claims that it's a part of the person's spirit. Okay, you know, that was a fragment that come down through the generational line. And he's sitting there talking to it, telling it to renounce its sins. And that now they can be saved and go on with Jesus is that like not confusing <laughs> it's not biblical either way it's not biblical okay and he is talking to a part of the spirit that's supposedly in this person so you know the only time that i see in the bible that there's more than one spirit in a person is with the demon possessed man in the tombs the man that Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he said, my name is Legion, for we are many. That's the only time you see in the Bible where a person has several other beings in them or personalities, whatever you want to call it. That's the only time you ever see anything like that. And what did Jesus do? Did he counsel them? Did he ask them their names? And, you know, when he said we are many, he still didn't dig further and see what their names were, did he? I mean, you didn't hear him say, well, go out of him, John, George, Leviathan, this and that. You didn't hear him do that. He never did that. He just said, come out of him. He, he called them evil spirits. He called them devils. You know, whatever, you know, but he did not do that. And, you know, when we deviate from the Word of God, we're on dangerous ground, especially when you're playing with the demonic and you're playing with spiritual warfare. Okay, you know, what he's doing is he's mixing uh, psychology with spirituality. He's mixing, uh, you know, it's not a mental issue, okay? It's a moral issue. It's not a psychological one. It's a spiritual one. You know, that's why a lot of people get confused. They think they go by what psychiatrists say. They go by what science says. You know, the physical plays in harmony with the spiritual, you know. Um, it, it's, it's just, we know there's a spiritual war at, at hand. It's not a physical one. You know, the Bible even says that, you know, our, uh, our, what is it, our, uh, what is it, it says, is not carnal. Our, the weapons of warfare is not carnal, okay, but it's spiritual. It's, it's not carnal. So, you know, we just need to <laughs> be aware, just be aware, and please share this video. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure people know this. Um, it is dangerous to be doing this kind of stuff. I mean, he's opening himself up. You know, just like I had mentioned before, you know, these paranormal investigators, when they're talking to, to the what they think is the dead and everything, they're opening themselves up to the demonic. The demonic then gets a foothold in your life. Um, you know, your your umbrella of protection, you've come out from under that. When you are... Uh, communicating with the dead or you are talking to um, sitting there well you know if you're not supposed to talk to the dead okay what makes us think that we should be talking to demons you know if it's a given you know we can't we're not supposed to be talking to them and you know like I said he's these demons took him on a rabbit trail you know bringing up something that was done in 1929 you know, it had nothing to do with that. It was like, it was just trying to get his mind off what he was doing, you know, from the begin with. And he was, he was <laughs> taking that bait, hook, line, and sinker. You know, he was, he was doing it. He was sitting right there playing along right with it. Well, what happened in 1929? Oh, and who is this? What is your name? I mean, you know, it's stupid. He's listening. He is, he is heeding to what these demons are telling him. You know, we can't go by what demons tell us. we got to go by what the Word of God tells us. You know, that's what we're told to do. Um, it's just, just please share this.
you know, we just need to get the word out there. This is deception, and I and, and I'm I'm worried about the deliverance ministry as a whole. <laughs> um, but we need to get the word out, and um, just if you're in deliverance and you're watching this, just be careful. You know, um, I know I need to be careful as well. But anyway, uh, people come to us for help. We don't need to lead them in further bondage. And we don't need to get into bondage, you know, trying to help someone else and doing it the wrong way. So anyway, um, I love you guys and God bless. I just wanted to share this and um, God bless. I'll talk to you again later. Bye-bye.